record-breaking hot day, Perry Logan stood on the precipice, thinking, am I like the rest of America to fall into a massive enthusiasm gap? Is not America here on July 5th, 2012, nothing but a whole great series of enthusiasm good? Hello and welcome to another Supernal Perry Logan show. This one called Enthusiasm Gaps. I said Enthusiasm Gaps. Conservatives look into their hearts in vain for the slightest bit of enthusiasm for their own candidate, Mitt Romney. The worst candidate ever. The candidate who blew Perry Logan's mind when he said the trees in Michigan are just the right size. You see, I, Perry Logan, am from Michigan, and I know better. The right have their enthusiasm gap, the left have their enthusiasm gap in Barack Obama. With family income 40% less than it was at the start of Obama's term, how can anyone cough up any real enthusiasm? <laughs> how can anyone, how can anyone cough up? Any real enthusiasm for either of these candidates, Mitt? Worst candidate ever. Soon to have dictatorial power. Step, Step away, away from, from the, the camera. camera. Obama, who has uh, seen the misery index to a 28-year high, poverty levels at a growing and growing. Poverty levels growing. All kinds of bad news under go going on there. So, we've reached a point now where it's an election year. So. If you hear anyone expressing enthusiasm for either candidate this year, they're faking it. <laughs> they're faking it. I say they're faking it. Well, I don't know about you, but I can't find any enthusiasm either. My friends. It's July 5th, 2012, and during this election year, the mind of the American voter may be likened to an infinite labyrinth. Hi, and welcome to another infinite labyrinth of a Perry Logan show. This one called Enthusiasm Gaps. That's Gaps. Try as I might, look as I might into the heart of the American voter, I can find little to no real enthusiasm for anything. There is a hollowness to American politics. The only excitement comes on the negative side when we're tearing people down or attacking people. We're pretty good at that, but you see, there's no positive enthusiasm. There's no JFK, there's no FDR. There's no up to American politics now. It's just so very down. It's like an empty, vacant, and sterile labyrinth through which we wander like lost souls. Hey, this is all a metaphor, you know. Hey, this is all a metaphor, you know. Thanks for reminding us of that, Perry. This is America in an election year. We were looking for enthusiasm, but we found none. Conservatives looked into their hearts and found no love of Mitt Romney. 
found no enthusiasm for this most inept of candidates, Mitt Romney, possibly the next American president, and yet clearly and definitively, the worst candidate ever! Hi, this is Mitt Romney. I'm the worst candidate ever, and yet neck and neck with Barack Obama, probably going to whoop Barack Obama. So exhausted is America from being called racists. Is that it? Equally, the left look into their tiny little hearts. My fellow lefties looked into their tiny little gnarled up confused little hearts. And let's face it, found no enthusiasm whatsoever for Barack Obama. No mojo whatsoever in Barack Obama. The young people have left the Obama camp. Women are leaving the Democratic Party in droves. No matter what they say, anyone expressing enthusiasm for Obama is faking it. You know damn well. I was lost in a, in a kind of a sterile, vacant, empty labyrinth symbolizing the mind of the voter. Here on July 5th, 2012. Thank you for watching. And if you're not watching, you can just burn in hell. Your skin peeling off and burning your skin and a huge flame and your bones burning with snot, mucus, pus, vomit. Oh, a quick Tourettean moment. I feel better. However, like everyone else in the world, I feel no enthusiasm whatsoever for the, pre for the presidential candidates. Give me a break. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. Mitt has got to be, has got to be the worst candidate ever. Right? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I love the guy. He can always say the wrong thing. Everyone has noticed this. The only interesting thing about Mitt are the wrong things he says and the fact that he will lead America to ruin. He will almost certainly, as sure as I stand here today, be the third successive worst president ever. Hey, quick historical note. Uh, if Mitt Romney becomes president, he will quickly become the third in a straight series of worst presidents ever, starting with George W. Bush, but then suddenly Barack Obama wrest the crown from George W. Bush's pointy little head. My, My pointy little, little head? head? Yeah! Your pointy little head! My pointy little, little head! head. Your pointy little head! My pointy little, pointy little, pointy little head! Your pointy little, pointy little, pointy little head! Oh yeah! Hell yeah! Hi, uh, this is George W. Bush. And I don't know about my pointy little head, but I was easily the worst president ever. And you know, I get off on a technicality from that worst president ever thing. Because uh, Perry Logan would be the first to say, I was never really elected. Give me a break. I was never really elected. But anyway, if we accept me as some kind of president, Barack Obama surprised the world by wresting the crown of worst president ever from my pointy little head. There are some hallucinations going on here. As America looks into its heart, and well, and it finds uh, many things, okay? Heartbreak at the death of the Republic. How would that be? Hey, how would it be if we, you and me and we just shared the heartbreak that the Republic, if not dead, is on hold? I'm sorry, the Republic faded out, you know, went into eclipse. You get the picture, the Republic curled up and died. Only recently, okay, recently, when, first of all, a president, Barack Obama, declared the right to kill any of us. That's like uh, King John stuff. That's Magna Carta stuff. All right. <laughs> and it does not uh, create a lot of enthusiasm, okay? And second, 
our own Congress, which is like kind of a Democratic Congress, one thought, has passed a, a bill called the NDAA, which is like horrible and awful and, and a kind of a nightmare, in which they say they can take us away. It's kind of like, yeah. And it seems to me that once Congress has passed unconstitutional laws and allegedly Democratic presidents have uh, made unconstitutional claims of power, the republic is at an end. Okay? Yeah. Now, against this background of a burned and destroyed, of a burned and destroyed republic, a nuked republic, if you will, destroyed by its own government, who now is spying on everything, is like apparently counting our keystrokes. If I knew what government official to call, I could call him up and say, ask him how many keystrokes I had done. And so could you. They care so much about us. And they are, of course, uh, we continue to imprison all but the rich at record levels. You know? We are living a kind of a neocon's dream. Hello, my friends. We're building a dome. It's July 5th, 2012, and we're building a dome. Yes, it's clear by now that not only is global warming real, it's so bad we are going to have to kill and eat the global warming deniers. Thanks to whom, we'll all have to live in a dome. Hey, look at it this way. If we don't kill and eat global warming deniers, uh, they will simply pollute the dome. Uh, they will pollute the dome. And then we will have to build a smaller dome and live in a smaller dome. We cannot lose the planet to these people, my friends. I think we already Enthusiasm? You dare to talk about enthusiasm in a world where we have so many pressing problems. We have global warming. It's the summer of 2012, a summer when some 3,125 temperature records have been broken. Go Earth! Yes, yes, you see, the global warming deniers have helped us fry the planet with their delaying tactics. We must be sure to kill and eat them before we move into our dome. And of course, uh, most pressing for most Americans are the terrible economic times, times when the average family income has dropped 40% in the last three to four years. It's dropped. That's average family income. In case you're feeling the pinch, you're not alone. You're not alone in feeling the pinch. It's the age of Obama when we all feel the pinch. You get it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get excited. <laughs> All right. Well, I imagine you're looking into your heart and feeling no enthusiasm whatsoever. Yeah, well. Hello, welcome here to... Ah, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Enthusiasm Gap, Texas. I'm the mayor of Enthusiasm Gap. Mayor Perry Logan. Are we here in enthusiasm gap? Are we feel it too? Are we know our government ain't gonna do a damn thing? From where we stand, it's pretty clear that the only difference between the Dems and the Repubs, the Dems and the Repubs, is that the Republicans will tell you they're going to screw you, and the Democrats lie about it. <laughs> Thank you, Obama, for bringing our enthusiasm so very low. <laughs> well, I submit that if you're feeling any enthusiasm for the presidential candidates, you're faking it. <laughs> hey, if you express any enthusiasm for either Barack Obama, whom we love, and Mitt Romney, whom we love, you're faking it. Hey, who the hell's paying you? Who sent you? If you have any enthusiasm for these guys, you are ignoring the hollowness in your heart, the realization these guys are not going to do anything about global warming deniers. They're certainly not going to help us build those domes. 
And they're certainly not going to help us kill and eat the global warming denier. Here's me killing and eating the global warming deniers. Enthusiasm for Barack Obama? Are you kidding? By now it's been three to four years, and by now everyone has been called a racist. <laughs> Just, uh, you know, they are trying to pump up enthusiasm for Obama. Good luck to you, okay? But you see, uh, I think, among other things, Americans are a little tired of being called racists. Oh, I'm just trying to help enlighten you so <laughs> why there's no enthusiasm in your heart. Why? When you look into your heart, uh, you see nothing but a kind of a sterile, empty, vacant, colorless labyrinth of non-enthusiasm, of, well, let's face it, apathy. Okay, okay, that's it. <laughs> you look into your heart and feel apathy because um, you're sick to death of being called a racist, all right? Don't you get it? Everyone has been called a racist by now because at some point or another they disagreed with this worst president yet, okay? It's, we're going to call Obama the worst president yet, okay, Obama? Worst president yet? Okay, that doesn't bother me. Nothing bothers me. I have a plan. I'm playing three-dimensional chess. I'm a constitutional scholar. And I'm just so much smarter than you. Thank you. The kind of condescension we've come to know and love in Barack Obama. Hence this vacant interluder cave of, of apathy, apathy which fills our heart, making it very much like a vacant, sterile labyrinth which goes on forever as we search in our hearts for the slightest bit of enthusiasm or love or anything from these candidates who aren't going to do anything. Step, Step away, away from the camera. camera. I got too, I got excited, got too close to the camera, it won't happen again. Won't happen again, Bob. All right. <laughs> uh, among other things, I would submit that if you are expressing enthusiasm for Barack Obama or for Mitt Romney, you're faking it. I hereby accuse you of blood faking it. You are even confused. You are either lying to yourself or lying to us. Which is it? Come on. I don't care what happens to me. Step, step away, away from the camera. camera. I don't care. I repeat, step, step away, away from the camera. If you're expressing the slightest bit of enthusiasm for Barack Obama or Mitt Romney, come on, man. You're faking it. You're lying to yourself. Or you're lying to us. Which is it? Which is it? Which is it? And now, Mitt Romney forms out of the primordial ooze. The pain! The pain! Just kidding. Hi, this is Mitt Romney. I realize I'm boring. I realize I'm dumb. I realize I'm the worst candidate ever. I once said the trees in Michigan were just the right size. Do you know how that blows Perry Logan's mind? Perry is from Michigan, and the trees in Michigan are all the wrong signs. That's what Perry says. Just kidding. I know I'm dull. 
I know I'm the worst candidate ever, and yet I may soon have dictatorial powers. Yeah, this is Mick Carney, who I may soon have dictatorial powers. Significant powers that your Barack Obama has given to me. <laughs> ah, yeah, ah, yeah. I will soon have the power to keep any fun of you. Ah, Mick Carney, soon to be commander in chief, soon to have dictatorial powers. Many of them given to me by your guy, Barack Obama, a new kind of delight, a new kind of dream. This is Mitt. I'd like to flip on that. Okay, let's just flip the etcher sketch and watch the Perry Logan show. Let's just flip the etcher sketch and watch a Perry Logan show. Might as well face it, our enthusiasm has plummeted precipitously since 2008. Aww. How could it not be so? It began with those cabinet appointments. Wow! <laughs> Essentially it was all over with the cabinet appointments. Remember those? I refuse to remember those cabinet appointments. Well, since then, what hasn't happened to dampen our enthusiasm? Aww. The quadrupling of drone attacks? The declaration of the right to kill any of us? Obama's expansion of the weaponization and use of nuclear power in space? Obama facilitated the kind of drilling that led to the BP oil disaster in the first place. They are now drilling twice as deep with the same rotten equipment. Ouch! There goes that enthusiasm, huh? Obama has expanded nuclear weapons spending. You heard it here first. Oh, hence the gigantic enthusiasm gaps. The enthusiasm gaps that fill our hearts, my friends. Step, step away the from the camera. camera. Okay. I repeat, step, step away, away from the camera. The hearts of the American voters may be likened to a vast and endless sewer in which all enthusiasm has been damped out. And now we've got the corporations after Citizens United, the corporations dinning us with their terrible messages, sending politics into the sewers of capitalism. Ooh, ah! July 25th, 2012. Global warming sweeps the globe. Angry Americans cook and eat the global warming deniers. Americans prepare to live in a dome. That's right, global warming has swept the earth. The summer of 2012 has seen 3,215 temperature records set. It's time to start trying global warming deniers on the sidewalks. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to band together and try the global warming deniers on the sidewalk and eat them. We're all going to have to live in a dome, and we must kill any the global warming deniers before they pollute the dome. Oh yeah! Before they pollute the dome. Oh yeah! Ma. All right, all right. So you say, hey, wait a minute, you there? You say. You're enthusiastic about Mitt Romney? Pow! Hey, you say, you have the nerve to look me in the face and say, you have the slightest bit of enthusiasm for Barack Obama in your heart? Pow! Banish these thoughts from your mind. I said to banish these thoughts from your mind. Banish these thoughts from your mind, my foot. If you say you are feeling any enthusiasm for Barack Obama or Mitt Romney, you are faking it. 
You're faking it. I hereby accuse you of faking it. Jack Hughes, you heard me. Jack Hughes, Jack Hughes. Step, Step away, away from the camera. Jack Hughes, Jack Hughes, Jack Hughes, Jack Hughes, Jack Hughes, Jack Hughes.